This is the final goal for this episode, and here we will start off with the original RAW file. We will work on it in Lightroom and Photoshop with that vision in mind of finishing the photograph so that it looks like this. With that in mind, let's begin. Hello, my name is Chris Orwig, and welcome to my weekly series where I share with you some tips and tricks that can help you to capture and create better photographs. Well, in this week's episode, we are in Lightroom and Photoshop. We'll start off with this photograph and we'll take it through an entire workflow from start to finish. We'll look at how we can crop the image, improve the overall color, the details, and then retouch away some of the distractions. All right, well, let's start off by cropping. Here, I'll tap the R key to select the crop tool, or you can click on the crop tool icon right here in the tool strip. Now, often you wanna make sure that the aspect ratio is locked down. The shortcut key for that is the A key. So go ahead and lock that down. And then I'm going to click and drag from one of the corners in just to change the composition. And I'll position the cursor near one of the corners and then rotate, because I want that surfboard to be straight up and down. Double click to apply the crop. If you decide you wanna change your crop, tap the R key and then you can go and move this around or expand it or change it however you want. In this case, I think that looks pretty good, liking that. All right, next step, we'll look at how we can improve the overall color and tone. We'll go into the basic panel. And in the basic panel, one of the things I wanna do first with my color temperature is just warm this up just a little bit there because here we are at sunset and I love the backlight that we have over there. So I'm just warming that up to bring out a little bit more warmth from the overall image. Then next I'll brighten the image up a touch, add some contrast. Now the image is really coming to life, right? You can kind of see there's before, here's after. It's almost done. There isn't a ton to do with this photograph. And I should point out, this is a picture of Daniel Norris and Daniel here, he is a pitcher for the Detroit Tigers. And here he is in front of his vintage van. He's a surfer as well, great guy. So I wanna capture this sort of California moment, right? And so I'm shaping the way that I process the image with that in mind, or I'm changing that with that in mind. So I want warmth, I want the drama, I want this to be real. So I'm gonna drop down my highlights because that's that sun there. Actually, I might even brighten that up a little, bring a little more sun flare into the image. So bring that up, boost those shadows a touch, drop those blacks down there, and that is looking good. Now, when we go down to presence, I want to highlight one technique here with clarity. And I'm going to zoom into the sign, the hand-painted sign on his van here. Notice that as I increase clarity, exaggerating for a moment, it lost a lot of the red that we had there. And if I bring up vibrance and saturation, I can bring some of that back. So I can kind of find the right mix there that might bring some of that original color back. Now, the reason why I wanted to highlight that is often what will happen is people will increase clarity and not realize they're desaturating the image as well. Now, I don't want to go this high with my clarity slider. I want something much less. So how do you reset a slider? Well, just double click the little tab there and it will take it back to its default setting. So double clicking resets that to the default setting. So here, let's add a little bit of that snap of clarity. It's always kind of nice to have and then a little bit of vibrance and a little bit of saturation, right? So that now what we have is our original before and then now the after. The image feels alive and nice and beautiful. Now, one of the things that I like to do often is after I've done my basic controls here, I like to go to the tone curve panel. Part of the reason I like this is because I've worked in Photoshop for years and I like the tone curve. And you can click on the curve and the highlights and brighten that up. You can go down to the darker, shadows down here and bring that down. This is a really subtle S curve. Let me exaggerate it for a moment. But you can see what it does is it adds an overall snap to the image. Now, the further out that you drag those points, the more contrast and color saturation that you'll get. And sometimes I find just adding a little teeny S curve just adds that little extra snap to the photograph. And in this case, I'm kind of digging that. So, so far so good. We have that one there. Now, other things that we can do with color that can help sometimes with sunrise or sunset is to go to split toning. And this image, I don't think we'll need it, but let me just show you what I mean. If you zoom into a part of your image where you have darker tones like these shadows here, we can bring up that shadow amount and those darker 
areas now receive that color. So you can see that has sort of this greenish or bluish cast to it, or we could go back to red. Now, the reason why I think this image doesn't need it, maybe just a little hint of red, is because the colors are already so vibrant. Actually, I kind of dig in that with a little bit of, of that saturation there. So just a touch bringing out some of that red or red tones in those darker areas can help out. All right, you could also do something with your highlights if you wanted those to, to become more yellow or a different color. You can create some really kind of vintagey vibes there too, but this image doesn't need more than a little hint of color in those shadows. Well, now that we're here, let's talk about our detail controls. Now, detail controls, we have sharpening and noise reduction, and it's often hard to know what should we do with these settings. Let me show you what I typically do and then reverse engineer it. Almost all of my images have values like this right here. Sharpening somewhere around the 90s, radius stays at one, detail goes pretty low, have some luminance reduction around 20s to 30, something in there, color, same thing. Now, how do I know that and why is that? Well, if we zoom in on the area of the image and let's just remove noise reduction for a minute and color noise reduction for a minute and exaggerate all the sharpening that we have here. Can you see how we have this weird little color artifacting happening in this part of the image? Well, color noise reduction is going to minimize that. Now, luminance noise reduction, it's going to be the brightness value. So it's kind of smudging out the image, which in turn is making it soft or too soft. So often if you reduce noise, you then need to sharpen. Now, often you will not need to go this far. You'll need to do something a little more delicate and gentle like we have here course you can zoom in and make sure it looks good with your capture your camera your lens but this is a really good starting point now the detail the higher that goes the more we're going to see small details being sharpened so you can see all the little small details that we have there sharpened or not so for portraits it's low environmental portraits maybe around 10 if it's just a building i'll crank that up higher so it depends on how much you want to sharpen the small details now the masking is really interesting. Press Option on a Mac, Alt on Windows, and click and drag that to the right. And can you see how it's creating this black and white mask? Now what is that? Well, whatever is black is concealed, whatever is white is revealed, just like in Photoshop masking. What that means is the sharpening effect will only be applied to the area that's white. So typically you don't wanna sharpen the entire image, right? Just everything. You say, you know what? Don't sharpen the sky. We don't really need to sharpen too much of some of these edges or too much of the road, but just find somewhere around here that looks pretty cool. That will apply the sharpening effect to those areas of the photograph. Okay, awesome. We've made some great progress. Now I wanna retouch away just a couple little things, but I'm gonna do that in Photoshop because it's gonna be faster and you'll see why in a second. So I'm ready to send this image to Photoshop so we can go photo edit in, edit in Photoshop or press command E on a Mac, control E on Windows. What that will do is it will send the image over to Photoshop so that we can then continue our workflow. Now for this workflow, we're gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna name this new layer Fix or Retouching. And I'll grab one of my retouching tools like this one here, Spot Healing Brush. And I wanna turn on Sample All Layers. And let me show you why. There's a little bit of trash on the ground right here. And what I wanna do is retouch that away. And so by retouching this on a new layer, let me zoom in so you can see that. Basically, it patched that, but it did so on a separate layer right here, and it cleaned up all of my little problems. And sometimes what you'll wanna do is just retouch away anything that you find to be distracting. And so just going through and removing anything that's sort of taking away from the overall feeling of the photograph. And so in this case, just cleaning up the concrete a little bit, but again, still wanna go for a really natural vibe here. Okay, so far so good. We did a little bit of retouching. Why the heck did we do that in Photoshop? Well, I did that in Photoshop because I had set this little solar shower right up here on top of the van, and that would be really hard to retouch in Lightroom. So if I know I'm gonna be doing some work in Photoshop, I might as well go there real quickly, deal with the easy stuff, and then if anything's hard like this, I'll deal with that as well. Let me show you one technique that we can use to deal with this. What you can do is choose the clone stamp tool and we wanna go with 100% opacity, brush, no hardness, and decent size brush. 
I'll actually make it really big just to illustrate a point, and then sample all layers. Then if you option or alt click on a good source area, like right here, you can bring that over. And can you see how I have that top of the roof right there? And then I can just click and I can bring that in. And I'm basically bringing over good part of the roof from this side here. Now, you typically don't want to have a brush that big. So you want a smaller brush so you can kind of chip away at it a little bit easier, not bring in too much of the unwanted background. But sometimes it's helpful to just do it like I did there. And then with the background, just go over that and make sure you aren't creating any repeating patterns. Now, once you've done this kind of work, if you notice that it's not quite perfect, like here's one of the things I'm seeing. Take a look at this. Do you see how the roof goes here? Then there's a small little drop right there. How, how the heck are we going to fix that? Well, there are a couple of options here that you can use. One of the th ways that you can do this is you can make a selection over an area. And I'm going to go to Edit and then Free Transform. And in Free Transform, we have the ability to warp this. So I'm going to go ahead and click in Warp. And then what I can do is just nudge this down. Do you see how it's that little area right there? So I'm just nudging this around and I'm moving that down to a lower spot. Now, if that doesn't work for you, what we can do is liquefy. So it didn't really work for me. Sometimes it does. So to liquefy it, you really want to flatten this back down to the bottom layer or merge to top. Either way, these are so small, I'm just flattening down. Command-E on a Mac, Control-E on Windows does that. Then we're going to go to Filter and Liquify. And in the Liquify dialog, we'll use the Forward Warp tool. We want to have density low, pressure low. And I'll just zoom in on this a little bit here. And then with those lower values, what we can do is just nudge this down. And I'm just kind of fixing this little roof line that we have right here. It's kind of a small little change, but nonetheless, kind of important one. And then I'll click OK in order to apply that. And if we zoom out, we can see that we have successfully retouched this image. And it's looking kind of cool. Now, the only thing I want to do in my last step is I'm going to go to Color Balance. And in Color Balance, I'm feeling like I want to change the overall look a little bit. It became a little bit too red-yellow for me, so I'm compensating for that by add, removing a little bit of that here. And the way I did that was in my midtones, I added a little bit of cyan and a little bit of blue. And I think this is a little bit better because it was just, it was a touch too strong for me. All right, well, once we've done all of that, we are now done with Photoshop and we have finished this project. So here I'll press F to go to full screen mode. I like to do that just to step back look away from the image. Why don't you try this as well? Then look back and make sure that you've done everything that you've wanted to do. And in this case, it's looking good. And most importantly, hopefully you picked up some tips and tricks here. And thanks so much for joining me in this week's episode. I'll look forward to seeing you in another one. Have a fantastic rest of your day.